the institution of marriage is a fascinating social, economic and even political barometer. In the 20th century, the lowest marriage rate of six per thousand of the population came in 1931, as the Australian economy spiralled into the Great Depression. Eleven years later, the marriage rate peaked at 12 per thousand as Australian troops headed to war and Japanese planes and midget submarines attacked mainland Australia. By 1999, despite a booming economy, shifting social norms around unmarried couples living together saw the marriage rate back down to six per thousand. That drifted down further over the next two decades to four and a half before the COVID pandemic hit. Australian states had a number of restrictions on Indigenous people only being able to marry other Indigenous people. In many cases, they needed permission to do so. And prior to the 1960s, Australian states had different legal ages for both sexual consent and marriage. That was standardised to a minimum of 18, although a court can approve a marriage involving one person as young as 16. Otherwise, you can't already be married, you can't marry your parent, grandparent, child, grandchild, brother or sister. You must understand what marriage is, enter into it freely, so arranged marriages are legal as long as the couple agree. Then you just have to fill out a form, give at least one month's notice, say certain words and you do need a registered celebrant. At the start of the 20th century, almost all Australian weddings were in churches presided over by a minister. Even in the 1960s, less than 10% of weddings were conducted by a civil celebrant. It was 50-50 by the late 1990s. Now, around 80% of weddings are with civil celebrants, with just 20% performed by a minister of religion. For much of the 20th century, it was assumed that if a woman was employed, she would leave her job once she married. And in many cases, it was enforced. The Australian Public Service Act of 1922 made it clear that no married woman shall be eligible for employment in the Commonwealth Service. In 1945, the Superannuation Act stated that a female officer who married shall be deemed to have resigned from the date of her marriage. That Commonwealth marriage bar didn't technically apply beyond the Australian Public Service, but state governments and many private companies mirrored the policy. In 1958, the Menzies government appointed a committee which recommended the marriage bar be removed, but Cabinet opposed the move, would be divisive and drive up male unemployment. They held that a woman's place was in the home. A lot of these women are the wives of business executives. This homemaker's course grooms them to help in their husband's careers from the discreet background of home and family. You pick up your knife and your fork. It took until after Menzies left his job in 1966 for the marriage bar to be removed and several more years for other institutions to follow suit. But the longest debate and the biggest legal changes have been over same-sex marriage. In 2001, the Netherlands became the first nation to legalise same-sex marriage, setting off a debate around the world. Three years later, in Australia, the Howard government amended the 1961 Marriage Act to include a definition of marriage as the union of a man and woman to the exclusion of others voluntarily entered into for life. Over the next decade or so, Canada, New Zealand, the UK and USA were among two dozen nations to legalise same-sex marriage. In 2017, a voluntary postal vote was conducted in Australia. A 61% yes vote saw Parliament vote to change the Marriage Act again. I declare the question resolved in the affirmative. That's it. <laughs> It took longer than expected, but Parliament fulfilled its promise to the people and finally made marriage equal. What a day! Modern weddings don't come cheap, though. Industry data suggests that couples spend, on average, over $32,000 on their special day.